the name of the boat is? Is Receta, which is the Spanish word for recipe. And uh, I mean, the name reflects that Steve and I both have more than just a passing interest in food. I love to cook, we both love to eat. And um, what we found as we dropped anchor at various islands is that you know, we'd go to shore to see what delicious surprises a place had in store for us and discovered that beyond that, um, food became a way to meet people and a way to get into the island. But that's how the name of the boat um, it came about. Um, Rosetta is um, a sloop. She's 42 feet long, and she'll be t 30 years old this year, which, which in, you know, in boat years makes her a fairly um, old boat, veering towards the classic. And uh, it also means that she has a lot less space below decks than modern boats have tended towards. The Spice Islands is, is where the, 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 the Spice Necklace idea comes from. And now, yeah. they, they call that Chain of Islands the Spice Necklace too? And, um, for us, it, it was a spice necklace, um, but the the actual spice necklace is something that they make in, in Grenada. Maybe I should pull yeah, this one right out there. of the bag so you can see it. Grenada is known as the island of spice, and the women in the market string the island spices and so that people can take them away as a fragrant reminder of the island, and everything from nutmegs to ginger root to cloves to bay leaves to this, which is a nutmeg, straight out of the fruit. I mean, it's been dried, but the outer coating is mace, because nutmeg is really two spices in one, the nutmeg itself and the mace coating. And for us, this, uh, you know, this, this journey, um, you know, through the islands of the Caribbean, uh, the, the chain of islands became to us like a spice necklace. And as I said, we, um, you know, we tried to follow the spices and the herbs into island life. The people, um, quite apart from the food, quickly captured me, and and um, everybody everywhere was pretty pretty enthused and and had and just dove right in with you into whatever. Uh, we were um, you know so delighted to find that expressing an, an, you know an, an interest in things like the food and the culture and the history that people responded, they were, they were delighted that somebody in turn was taking an interest in them. And being um, very open, very friendly, um, and in, 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 in places where people tend to live outdoors much of the time, because it's lovely out, and you know, learning that if you simply, you're walking a road and you see somebody on their porch and you wave a hello, it's bound to start a conversation and that is bound to lead to something else. And uh, uh, it's truly one of the things that we've enjoyed so much about the Caribbean. And one of the things when we uh, came back from that first trip, um, at that point we had friends in the islands and we not only wanted to go back and explore new places, we wanted to go back to our old friends. Every island, they were all kind of quirky and each one had a different kind of quirk. They all have their own personalities. And that's what we found. Just like all the spices on the spice necklace add a different flavor to the pot, it was like each island added um, a different flavor, different experiences, different adventures, different people to our to our big, you know, our big stew, if you will, of our uh, of our sailing adventure. Can I do some of these recipes with stuff I can find in a grocery store here? Absolutely. Um, now, in, in some large cities, um, especially ones that have a Caribbean population like Toronto, um, you can get every last exotic ingredient. But in the book, what I've done is, um, there's 71 recipes, and I, I suggest uh, substitutions. So for instance, in Trinidad, there's an herb that's very common called, that they call shadow bene. Um, and it, it really is a close relative of cilantro and cilantro is a perfect substitute and you know we can buy cilantro in just about every every uh, every supermarket um, and so you and in fact even if you don't have as we do often luckily on Rosetta um, access to lobster say um, I suggest substitutes like um, shrimp will do just as well in some of the recipes and and produce a very uh, a, a wonderful dish as well most of them however um, use you know very you know fish that you can get at your local fish market um, there's a um, a rub a fish rub in there that um, 
uh, uses spices and cocoa to form uh, unsweetened cocoa to form a, um, a crust on the fish and use whatever your favorite fish is and the rub will work perfectly. Same with, um, with the marinades and, uh, and for that matter with, with most of the dishes. Even if you're not, if you don't you know, read every ingredient, if you're not a recipe junkie uh, like my son is, it's just such a pleasure to read and the characters and the, the places and I, it just added a little bit of warm, I felt warm sunshine on me as I was reading it and shivering in bed. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. I like to think that it can be a, uh, a winter escape and as you say, you can enjoy it for the stories and if you don't want to take it into your kitchen, you just turn the page and keep reading. The book is The Spice Necklace, A Food Lover's Caribbean Adventure. I've been speaking with the author Anne Vanderhoof, and The Spice Necklace is published by Doubleday Canada.